For everyone who enjoys the old world, Turkey is one of the world's most intriguing nations. Every nook and cranny of it is soaked in history. Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we will be sharing fascinating archaeological sites in Turkey. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Visit Urartu in the far east and then strain your eyes to read the Hittite inscriptions in Karchemish on the Syrian border. The tomb of King Midas is found in one of the mounds outside of Gordium. You'll pass through ruins of old roadways, castles perched atop hillsides, old walled cities, temples, burial mounds, and pretty much everything else on your way to them. There is so much to see. Let's begin. Sardis Greece and Persia came together in Sardis. After a voyage that Herodotus claims would take a pedestrian three months, the great royal road of the Persian Empire arrived here, near the edge of the Mediterranean. Sardis was destroyed by a group of Greeks that included Athenians during the Ionian uprising that launched the Persian Wars. Later, this city served as the capital of the Seleucid and Roman proconsulates. Even though the restorations from the archaeological discoveries are fairly forceful, they display the sumptuous bravado of Hellenistic Asia Minor. There are many beautiful mosaics. After extensive trips along the east coast, arriving in Sardis inland may be the most amazing experience because it gives you the first sense of entering a foreign nation, one with wide open spaces, brown hills, and lush floodplains. It was formerly known as Lydia and is now what we refer to as the first outpost of Anatolia. Priene The city of Priene, as it is right now, is absurd. It presses up against the flank of Mount Michael in the interior, on the outskirts of a wide, fertile plain. Why did the Ionian Greeks congregate against a mountain when a large plain was available for construction? What were they doing here? The fertile plain was once all ocean, and the city had once been built on the sea. Since the city's establishment, the Meander River has deposited enough silt to shift the shoreline more than 20 miles out to sea. Even during the Hellenistic period, Priene was a landlocked city. The city's ancient Buletirion appears to have been abandoned only recently, and the Archon's throne appears to be awaiting the outcome of the most recent election. The remains in this area are inland, wooded, and rural. They are rarely visited, yet they feature some of the nicest atmospheres of all of the Turkish archaeological sites. Miletus one of the major ports in Ionia was Miletus, but like Priene, the city was abandoned as the harbor grew silty. Repeated earthquakes throughout the years demolished almost all the structures, leaving behind the archaeological site we see today, countless acres of strewn about marble and limestone, and one incredible, unbreakable theater. The science and philosophy of the Milesians were renowned. It is a quiet spot since it is cut off from the seaborne tourism industry and the major interior routes. Myra Although Myra is not well known, it is a fantastic location. The Lycian tombs carved into the cliffside are the main attractions. Although visitors cannot ascend the hill to see them, they are very worth seeing from below. Their appearance is a message from a bygone era because they come from a culture that blatantly accentuated and decorated mortality. There is a magnificent Roman theater in addition to the tombs. The most bizarre part is that a Santa Claus museum with his tomb is located here. Of course, St. Nicholas, a bishop in Myra, is Santa Claus. Here he was interred. His tomb was broken into and his body was taken for artifacts. It sounds like a terrific way to traumatize your young children, or rather to properly educate them in true history, to take them to see Santa Claus's cenotaph. Aspendos Some of the most spectacular structures from antiquity are stone theaters. The most amazing of all is likely the ancient theater at Aspendos. You can stroll through the galleries, enter the cave, choose a seat, and watch plays played with the whole scene set behind the action. Even though it is a nearly 2,000-year-old theater, it is hardly even an archaeological site. The city's remnants are generally in disrepair everywhere around the theater, making its survival all the more remarkable. Ephesus 
You may claim that international tourism has destroyed Ephesus. Tourists in t-shirts would be swarming the streets, grumbling about the heat. Ephesus is one of those places without shade, so it gets hot there. But you can see why it attracts tourists when you look at the great stone promenade that leads to the harbor that once existed but has since been silted up. The Celsus Library, the magnificent architecture, and the glorious theater. And now, if you can manage it, we hear that Turkey is far less crowded than it ever was. Pergamum Pergamum was arguably the most wealthy city in the Roman Empire. Undoubtedly, no archaeological site can compare to it in terms of sheer panoramic splendor. Its Acropolis, perched atop a towering granite platform, and required its agora in addition to the one in the main city because it was so large, is surrounded by greatness. You'll discover how suitable the magnificent Frieza from the Battle of the Gods and Giants original setting was, high on this Phrygian mountaintop, before it was hauled off and placed in the Pergamon Museum in Berlin. One of the most dramatic theaters in the world, it is carved directly into a steep hillside with a view of the setting sun. And while the Library of Alexandria receives most of the attention, we would be just as fortunate if the Library of Pergamum had been preserved with its 200,000 scrolls. There isn't much shade at the site during the summer, but if you can visit during a cooler season, there is a wide area to explore that is evocative of Hadrian's villa. Hierapolis Pamukkale Pamukkale, which translates as Cotton Castle in Turkish, is the contemporary name for ancient Hierapolis. People have been coming here for the hot springs for millennia. The mineral-rich groundwater has produced a series of sparkling white travertine terraces that bubbles up from the earth and evaporates in pools. Even without the nearby archaeological site, they are worth viewing on their own. But when you combine the two, you have something truly special. There is a theater, an intriguing cemetery, and some beautiful historic structures. Aphrodisias One of the important artistic hubs of the ancient Mediterranean was Aphrodisias. Nearby quarries created superior, warm-tinted marble, and a sculpture industry developed around it that was exported to every part of the Roman Empire. In every area of this amazing location, priceless works of art now rot on the ground. It is more of an outdoor sculpture museum than an archaeological site. You name it, Aphrodisias has it. Well-preserved city walls, a stadium, temples, and they're all elaborately carved. The secret to visiting Aphrodisias is to spend the night there. A short distance from the remains in a secluded region of wheat fields and olive orchards, Gare is home to just a restaurant and two motels. But you should have a sketchbook and a camera to enjoy this isolated location. A very amazing experience is seeing the ruins in the moonlight if you stay the night. Nemrut Da Ionia is home to the majority of Turkey's top archaeological sites. The nicest one is located in the interior close to the Syrian border. A historic sanctuary known as Nemrut Da is located on a 7,000-foot hilltop in the Taurus Mountains. The structure is thought to be the creation of Antiochus I, monarch of the Comagene Kingdom, a Hellenistic client state during the Roman Empire. A huge tumulus of scree, more than 150 feet tall, has been artificially added to the mountainside to improve it. Massive, 25-foot-tall statues of Antiochus and a group of gods are placed on twin platforms facing the rising and setting suns. The site appears to be the scene for an Ozymandias movie because the sculptures' heads have all fallen to the ground. It would help if you traveled more than an hour down a dirt road to reach the spot, and once there, you will see mountain after mountain reaching off into the distance. That is all for this video. We will be back soon with another informative video. Don't forget to like and share this video. Until next time!